Good evening and welcome to Let's Talk Shop with Russ. Uh, got the panel all here tonight. We're all ready and uh, to start the show. Um, and I just got back from going to Cozumel on a cruise and going to Cozumel, Mexico. So had a good time this week. My son got married. I think I've told you all that. I got married on the uh, on the cruise before the cruise left. Uh, everybody was allowed. Uh, there was like 35 of us there, but we went to the wedding and some of us uh, stayed and went on the cruise. And those that didn't go on the cruise left after the wedding, uh, at the reception. We had the reception there on the boat also. And it, I want to tell you, it really, I was surprised and it really turned out fantastic. A uh, beautiful wedding. They had the photographer was fantastic. I posted a few pictures and uh, it, we had a good time. So, and then after the wedding, uh, we kind of like went on our own. We saw oh, now we wasn't, we didn't stay, hang out with them all the time. I saw my son and, and Cheyenne, uh, I don't know, quite a bit on the ship, but I'm just saying we all kind of like went our own ways and had a lot of fun. And my wife's uh, sister and her husband uh, went on the cruise with us. So uh, we kind of hung out together and had a lot of, had a lot of fun. So all the food you can eat. I have had so much steak and lobster. It's like running out of my ears and shrimp and crab legs and uh, prime rib uh, cakes. Oh my God. Just, German chocolate, uh, red velvet, uh, banana pudding, uh, just anything and everything you can imagine that you wanted to eat. They, ha they had buffets that you can go eat. The buffets don't close until one of the buffets didn't close till two o'clock in the morning. So you could stay out and party and go uh, eat, eat at two o'clock in the morning if you wanted to. So, And then you get up and go have breakfast and just food, 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 food. Had a great time. So, and I, we are very fortunate uh, Shy, to have Cheyenne as our new daughter-in-law. Uh, very beautiful and very intelligent young lady. She's in nursing school right now. And it, uh, she, she's got one more semester to finish and she'll be an RN. So, had a good time. So, that's it. Um, there's, I'll, uh, we've been posting pictures. I got to steal some other pictures because I was so busy. I didn't take a lot of pictures. So I got to steal some of my other family members pictures and put them on over on my Facebook thing. So y'all can see them. But let me talk about my wonderful sponsors and they are Devobal technologies for web design development, hosting, visit devobal.com fast cap, innovative products for the professional woodworker. Go to fastcap.com rockler 60 years in woodworking create with confidence Visit rockler.com, Bearwood Supply Company, your best choice for hard to find woodworking supplies, bearwood.com, Clean Spore the Sanding Specialist, woodworkingshop.com, Seiko the Scroll Saw Specialist, Seiko.com, and Scroll NATO, desk collection system for your scroll saw on Amazon. And don't forget on Wednesday nights, I have Scrolling and Making with Russ right here on YouTube. We moved it over from Twitch over to here. So let's see who all we have. Uh, Luann. Luanna Pierce is out there. Jimbo. Uh, Buster Stott. Uh, Michelle Marcou. Kind of good. Ken McCrory. Uh, Joyce McGuire. Uh, Dave Hart. Bob Lee is out there in the chat. Steve Good. David Roby. And uh, those are just a few. Bob Lee, uh, I already said. Michelle Marcoux, Dave Hart is out there in the chat. All these people are out there in the chat. Good to have you. I appreciate it very much. And don't forget, while you're out there in the chat, give me a thumbs up while you're there. So, But, yeah, so uh, tonight we're just going to do some chat, chat, and talk, talk uh, to fill in. And then uh, here a while back, a few months ago, I purchased the uh, Incra iBox. And I'm going to be talking about that. This is for making box joints. Uh, so we're going to be talking. I'll go over that and tell you how I like it. And I do like it. I'm really happy with it. And we're going to go over that tonight also. But let's, let's let us let our 
panel introduce themselves, and I'm going to start with Mr. Chris. Hey, Kemper, it's Chris here at the Old Cranky Workshop. Um, we're back in the shop. It's warm weather. Finally hit 70 degrees today and stayed there all day, So, which is a surprise. New video coming out soon on changing the blades in my um, planer, and then a couple project videos. We're starting to get prepped for the pallet challenge, so... Anyways, you'll find me on YouTube and Facebook. That's all I got. Cool. Thank you. Uh, Dick. Hey, Russ. It's good hey. to be here. Um, Dixon Hoffman from Hoffman Signs and Decals. You'll see me once in a while on Facebook. I moved some of my stuff out in the garage because it's so nice out. I hate to be downstairs. So I'm glad to hear the birds singing again. Yes, it's nice to hear the birds singing again. It's, it's actually, we didn't have a winter this year in Florida. I mean, really. I mean, I think we had maybe seven days out of the whole winter that were really what I would consider cold. So we didn't have a winter. It's been summertime and I'm sitting here. I forgot to turn the air conditioner on early. So I'm kind of sitting here sweating myself. I don't think I'm going to go turn the fan on while Jim is introducing himself. Hey, Jim Bashir from Driveway Workshop. And uh, I just barely made it back in. So if I look sweaty and crappy i was out in the yard trying to do some work um just have a small like i said a small uh channel called driveway workshop i've been tearing apart some old furniture to make uh some heirloom boxes and stuff for the kids it was their great grandma's furniture so she had really cool patterns on all these old this was a dressing like old-fashioned dressing table and stuff so the whole like dressing table was like that so that's all kind of woodworking what I've been working on lately. Cool. Did you get your fan on? Yeah, I turned the fan I, on. I will relinquish the remainder of my time. Yeah. Yeah, I had to turn the fan on. Like I said, I forgot to turn the air conditioner on early. So it's, I mean, it feels good in here, but I, I would sweat in 30 below. So, uh, yeah, well, we got up to like almost 80 here today and we were outside work and it was like, nope. <laughs> we yep, yep. turned around and went to the house. So, yeah. John. Good evening, everybody. Oh, Russell. by the way, did you get a little delivery? Uh, yes, actually, I did. But I was going to precede that with a little bit of story for our, oh, for sure. our viewers and whatnot. Yeah. Um, anyway, you can find me on Facebook. No big deal. Uh, I do have a little bit of a YouTube channel. Um, anyway, a couple of years ago, uh, if you <laughs> see behind Russ's head there, there's, a, <laughs> there's something that he fashioned for himself. And I spoke up. I said, geez, I would love to have one of those. <laughs> it ain't been and two it years. Was, it's been at least two years, buddy. <laughs> anyway, uh, you know, he's let it slip his mind. I mean, he's getting older and whatnot, and he just doesn't think <laughs> like he used to. So oh. I remind him about every six months. And uh, last, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago or two, three weeks ago, he mentioned that he would make a note of it, put it on his computer, and be reminded, and lo and behold, Thursday morning, I go out to check the mail, and this was in the mail, and uh, did a really nice job on it. Uh, it looks great. I love the sparkle and the numbers. He put glitter or something in there. Yep. And uh, it, it just, and it works. I put a battery in it. And, yep, I can uh, see the second hand moving. Yep. Yep. So I won't have to remind you it, come November, bud. <laughs> Unless, of course, you come up with something new that I want. <laughs> Why is the second man moving backwards, though? <laughs> well, I got the battery in inside out. That's what it is. Uh, did uh, So I'm glad it made it because did you yeah. see how I packed that damn thing? No, well, you packed that thing to go to China for crying out loud. Yeah. That thing was well packed. Yeah, uh, I had my hot glue gun out and I was hot gluing pieces of cardboard around it. And yeah, it. Um, I told my wife, I said, if they damage this clock, they're going to have to really do some hard work. Oh, you did well. I, I very much appreciate it, my friend, and I will cherish this for the rest of my life. You're welcome. Very welcome. So I'm glad it got there, too, all in one piece. Uh, Katie. Katie. We can't Hi. hear you. Hi. Yeah, you can hear me now. Yep. I'm Katie, and uh, I'm on Facebook, and that's uh, pretty much it. I just uh, uh, bother people and, uh, and 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 mostly Russ. 
<laughs> Russ, Russ, Russ got a new watch while he was on the cruise, and the the watch was like two dollars and seventy five cents, but they charged him seventy or eighty dollars for the watch man because it was like this big. I mean, I mean, I've had belts smaller than that watch man. <laughs> Okay. Yes, I. The second or the first day on the ship, I have a had a I have a real nice fossil watch. I love that watch because it's like a um, it's a different color. Uh oh, I got problems here. It says my battery's running low. Uh, y'all stand by real quick. I gotta figure. Everybody out. stand by. Yeah, I gotta figure out what's wrong. Bye. Do we have to stand up? Bye, Grandpa. Bye, bye. Bye, little red. Bye, little red, and the grandkids. Those, those were them. Um, they're moving to Arizona tomorrow, and so they they came over to 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 visit and say goodbye. And we we've, we've kind of said goodbye. We visited, but uh, but anyway, that's that's what the kids are here doing, and and I bet they'll come in four or five times still. In the meantime, here's here's James. Here's James. Hello, James. Say hi to. I guess I should introduce myself. Yeah, uh, Say let, me hi lock, to the world. let me lock on you. Uh, there you go. You're, I'm locked on you. Let me okay. figure out what's going on. You go ahead and talk. I'm Al Forte, Odessa Woodworking and Maker Shop, Kilroy 79763. Uh, just for fun. Anyway, this here's James. He's uh, my grandson. Hey, James. Lil Red hi. was the other one running around. And they're moving to uh, Arizona, which tomorrow. I guess I already said that. Yeah, tomorrow. So um, they're going to have lots of fun. They're going to be like an hour and a half from Las Vegas. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so they're going to have lots of fun. And of course, awesome. of course uh, Nana is not happy because the grandkids are going away. So uh, tell, her, tell Nana to take heart. At least they're staying on the same continent. Yeah, exactly. They are, aren't they? They are. Not this, like my grandkid. This here's Adri. Hi. Hi. Hello. <laughs> hello. 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 But anyway. Hi. Uh, with that, I... Uh, They're all really oh. cute. Are they really kin to you, Al? Kind of. Yeah, yes. Well, kind of, yeah. Right. They're, 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 uh, they're my grandkids on wife's side. Oh, and, okay. Um, so I guess somewhere in there. Somewhere in there I fit in. Okay. <laughs> cool. I figured out what was wrong. Uh, I had turned the master power strip off when I left to go to uh, on the cruise so and I forgot dumbass me forgot to turn it back on so so it wasn't charging or it's now got power? no now it's charging I was running off a of battery mode off the computer yeah. oh you were on a cruise yeah I was on a cruise <laughs> well anyway it's great to be here we're gonna have a great show we're gonna do a tacky talk that, that, that means we're going to talk tacky. Yep. And, uh, um, I guess, Paul? Yes. You're it. Hey. Sit over here. Paul from Paul's Messy Workshop on YouTube, on Instagram, on Russ's show, just about everywhere. And uh, nothing new here other than there was no show on Wednesday. And, and I went through withdrawal, but I survived. Good. Glad you glad you survived. Uh, Steve Good is out there in the. Yes, uh, he is. See if somebody wants to. Uh, Steve, if you want the. Uh, if you want to come on the panel, we got we got room. I'll so, send them the link right now. Yeah, go over to your Facebook. Uh, Paul said he's going to send you the link. But uh, yeah, anyway, what I was going to say before the battery popped up and said it was going dead, was. Um, I have a very nice fossil watch, and I really love the way it looks. I love the color of it. It's a different color. It's like a, a almost like a bronze-looking color. But anyway, I've had it for several years, and I like it and everything. Well, the first day on the cruise, quit working. And somebody come up and asked me the time, and I looked at it, and I'm like, Ooh, I don't think this is the right time. So I pulled my phone out and looked at the time, and sure enough, it had been quit for a couple of hours. So. I was in the shops in the on the cruise and um, stumbled into a shop that had watches. So I bought me a little bling while I was gone. I think that was just an excuse, gang. He could have yeah. went. 
Well, I decided I wanted me a little bling and then a little. Ooh. It's, yeah, it's a citizen. It's really nice. I really like it. And one thing nice about this, this is their Eco Boost or whatever watch series. Uh, so therefore, it never needs another battery. It gets its, um, it charges the battery from sunlight. So green or, or light period, but sunlight, you know, light. So it always keeps the battery charged. You just have to keep it. You have to go outside some and wear it. You can't leave it in your drawer with all your drawers. Or <laughs> you know, if you the way that you got the Cosinol, you probably could have got that on the street for ten bucks. Yeah, I probably could have. <laughs> You're right. I probably could have got it at Cosinol for ten bucks. And there was there was one guy walking come up there when he had rings all over his fingers. He was like diamonds, 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 and I'm like, yeah, cubic zirconium. <laughs> yeah, right. Hey, there. They still look nice. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but yes, I'm very happy with my watch. I got me some bling. You kind of you could have got a Rolex for fifty. Yeah, I was telling them. So I walk into this place where all the watches were, and I don't know how many of y'all been on cruises, but this is our second, my wife and my my second cruise. And uh, so I walk into where all the watches are, and there was two cases right when you walk in the door, right up front. You have to walk or buy around them, so to speak, to go anywhere in the store. And so they were Rolexes and it said, um, refurbished, pre-owned, you know, Rolexes. And I'm like, Oh man, I can might be buying me a Rolex. You know, I was thinking like, yeah, if they're pre-owned, they gotta be a lot cheaper. Right. And so I walked over to the case and I'm looking at them and I saw one that I really like kind of gold like this beautiful watch, beautiful watch. The lady comes walking up in her broken accent of whatever country, foreign country she was from she was like can i help you today and i'm like yeah i said out of curiosity i said how much is that one right there and she looked at me she and didn't even hesitate she knows these damn watches how much they are i mean in her head and she looked at me and she went oh that one right there that one's twenty two thousand eight hundred dollars and i said twenty two thousand she goes yes twenty two thousand eight hundred mm-hmm yeah, right. I only paid thirty five for my house forty years ago. Yeah, so I, th now I'm intrigued. I'm like, okay, just out of curiosity, of both of these cases, what's the least expensive watch or Rolex you have in both these cases? And she looked down. She, oh, that one be that one over there. It's like eight thousand eight hundred. Yeah, I'm obviously in the wrong section of the store because ain't no way I'm paying eight even eight thousand dollars for a watch. So I'm like anyway. So I went over to where the normal watches were. This is a citizen and it's uh the eco boost and like I said I I got me a nice watch. So anyway yeah twenty two thousand dollars. That's crazy isn't it man but I guess yeah. if you can pay that much for a watch, it doesn't really matter how much. It yeah, costs, I mean, you know? if, you, uh, if I win the lottery, like, uh, and win like nine hundred million dollars, I could see that spending that on the uh, on a watch. But yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, that's just a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of money. Hey, Steve. Hey. Steve, how you doing, Steve? Hey, guys. Greetings. Yeah, I was just telling them about my Rolex experience. I was listening to that. Yeah. That was my league. Yeah. Yeah, even though the cheapest one in the case, I'm like, yeah, uh-huh. This one was uh I got uh was 30% off, and then you don't pay uh sales tax because you're on the boat. So uh that's another 10% right there. You know, I mean in my area it's seven and a half, eight percent for sales tax. So you might as well say ten percent. So I couldn't even to put a battery in it. Huh? I couldn't even afford to put a battery in it. Yeah, not on a Rolex. So this one I only paid two hundred and right at two hundred and fifty bucks for this. So hey, and, Steve, and that one you don't have to put a battery in it. Yeah, this one you, this one gets its uh charge from the uh, sunlight or from light. Fancy. You know, yeah. all jokes aside and stuff, it is a nice looking watch. I Thank mean, you. I, 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 I thought so too as soon yeah. as I saw it. 
I was like, I like that one. So I'm I not a big that. watch guy, but that, that's a nice looking watch. Yeah. So uh, that's the one. I this is the one I chose and got. So I, I liked it. I liked it. So anyway, so um, that's what. Yeah, like I said, we had a fantastic time. We went from my, we port. Uh, the port was in Miami. We left Miami and went to Key West. We left Key West and went to Cozumel, and then we come all the way back. On Thursday, it was uh, at sea day, so to speak. We were all, uh, I mean, we were, once we left Cozumel, we drove come all the way back to Miami. So Thursday was, and all Thursday night was nothing but on the water. So beautiful boat. It was the Carnival Victory. Beautiful boat. Uh, lots and lots and lots of stuff to do. Um, my son and daughter and beautiful boat. Daughter-in-law, yeah, Cheyenne. They uh, they had this uh, thing in one of the theaters, so to speak, uh, and they had married couples on the stage, and they asked the women the mar uh, the women uh, questions, and then um, the men were brought back and had to see if they could match their answer. Well, my my uh, son and Cheyenne actually won. They gave them all prizes, but my son and Cheyenne actually won. And uh, they didn't know that we were in the audience. So uh, they told a couple of secrets that I found out about. And I, I went and run right straight to her mother and told her one of them. And she was like, why did you tell my mother that? And I said, why did you get on stage and tell the whole world? <laughs> so anyway, it was a lot of fun. One of the questions was, and I have to tell you this one. It says, when your husband steps out of the shower, how would you best describe it? A full-length limousine or extended link limousine. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> a Ford I can dump, see where this is going. A yeah. Ford dump truck <laughs> or a little pink Volkswagen with four flat tires. Beep, beep. <laughs> yeah, that was one of the questions. One of the other questions was, is where have y'all ever made it? Where, have, yeah, mm -hmm. where's, what's the craziest place y'all ever made it before? I mean, that was one of the questions. On like, this cruise, right? On the cruise, yeah. yeah. Sounds like the newlywed game. It was kind of like that. It was kind of like that. Did so it have anyway, to be with that partner, though? American yeah. style. What Russ said is he can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Cheyenne uh answer to that first question was he was a stretch limo and Corey being very uh i don't know why the hell he said this but he says he was a little pink volkswagen with four flat tires beep, beep. <laughs> and then he corrected himself and he says well y'all didn't tell me the temperature of the water so i guess he was taking a cold shower at the time <laughs> <laughs> so lots and lots of fun and then we went and seen uh, "Living in America," which was a, um, a like a Broadway stage show where they did all kind of songs and you know they changed their costumes and uh, and brought us through. They brought us through the '70s and '80s with songs "Living in America." So it was it was a lot it was a lot of fun. This is our this is our second cruise, and uh, I had a lot more fun on this. Well, I don't know. The first one was pretty fun. We our first cruise my wife and I took was with her a high school, 20 year high school reunion or 30 year high school. reunion. I don't want to tell her age, so I have to be careful about what I say here, but, uh, might've been her 10 year high school. May let's say 10 year high school reunion in case she hears this and she won't be so mad at me, but anyway, but a her high, high school reunion. Yeah. Her high school reunion and a lot of her friends that she went to school with. And it was really, we had a really, really, really good time. But this one, I guess, was a little bit more special because my son got married on the boat and uh, we went on the cruise. With a lot of people went like, he's taking y'all on his honeymoon? I said, yeah. I mean, it's not, that's a big, huge boat. 2,300 passengers. It's not like we're going to run into his butt every five seconds. You know, that's, it's a big boat. So, oh, yeah, we uh, did set up, uh, he set up when they did the cruise, the dining situation so that we had 
uh, dinner together every night at 6 p.m. So that was kind of nice. We got to see him and all his her her family was there and whatever was on my family was there. So we had dinner together every night. So that was pretty cool. So anyway, I had a blast. That's for sure. Yes, we had a good time. Dick uh, Jimbo said, Russ, did you get any scrolling down when you were out? <laughs> no. That's the last thing on my mind was scrolling. Trust me. It's all the food you can eat, but they charge you for uh, alcoholic Thanks. beverages. Thanks. So what was on your mind, Russ? <laughs> what was on my mind? Yes. Hey. We uh, were having a good time. We did, we did all kinds of stuff. We uh, My wife laid out some, and I'm... I told her if I lay out, if I put on a bathing suit and go topless and lay out, they're going to call the, uh, uh, 40. <laughs> yeah. For, well, no, they're going to call the people who they call when you, uh, you have a beached whale. Well, you don't want to scare the kids either. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> I said, yeah, they'll call them to come because there's a beach whale on board. So yeah, I didn't lay out. She went and laid out with her sister and I went around and, uh, Oh, they have a casino on board. As soon as they get out of port, uh, into the international waters, the casino opens up and you can gamble. I'm not a gambler. I think I gambled five bucks the whole time I was on the cruise. They had this one machine. Big spender. That, yeah. <laughs> they had this one machine that it had one, numbers from one to seven, and each number represented a, uh, a denomination of a money, and it was all the way up to $10,000. And if so, it was a star. And if you could fit the star into the star uh, at the number, uh, lights went off, bells went off, and you won whatever, like, number four. I was trying for number four, which was the $10,000. So I, it's a dollar a try. I did five tries to try for the $10,000, and I was unsuccessful. Otherwise, I would have had a Rolex. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so, uh, and well, I was unsuccessful. That's the, I'm not a gambler, you know. I'm with you. I'm, I'm too cheap. Yeah. Now, my son <laughs> entered. He's really good. He entered the, uh, they had a blackjack tournament and he entered the blackjack tournament along with his new <coughs> father-in-law and the father-in-law, uh, Chris, uh, Roundtree, he won the blackjack tournament. He ended up winning 500 bucks. Nice. So my son came in second. So. <laughs> yep. Sweet. Yep. Good times. Now yeah, we got to plan, yeah. plan a show cruise now. Yes. Yes. Go. Yep. Uh, I. I mean, I need. I need some time to recoup. Uh, <laughs> so time you're going to spend. I, I think we probably spend about time you pay for the cruise and then all the anonymities and everything uh, plus the bling. I think we spent probably somewhere around three grand. Time everything said and done. That's not bad, really. A piece. Uh, huh. A piece or for both no, of you? No, three grand for both of us. Oh, that's not bad. No, yeah, the, not bad the, uh, the cruise was right at a thousand dollars just for the cruise. And but then you uh, anything and everything you do, you basically have to pay for. Uh, alcohol is a package. You can buy the package to uh, their premium package is two hundred and eighty dollars a day. Yeah. So if you pay the two hundred and eighty dollars a day, you can drink uh, up. I think fifteen drinks a every day. day. A day. <laughs> Paul and I are incredulous. That is, quite, that is quite possible to do, but yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, drink, I don't drink two hundred dollars worth of alcohol in ten years. Oh my God! Yeah, me <laughs> Can you bring your own? Can a you day? Like, no, you can't bring your own. You can't bring. And your that's shirt. one of the uh, things people do. I, my wife and I just we were going to buy one package, and it, they say no sharing. But if you're husband and wife, they kind of like don't care. We were going to buy the one package and I told her, I said, 208, I'm not going to drink 15 drinks. A, uh, even." Oh no. I said, I'm not going to drink seven drinks a day. Um, you know, over a period of time. So she says, well, I, you know, we got to be careful. And I said, yeah, I'll be careful. So we ended up, I had a few drinks and she had a few drinks. We ended up spending total alcohol uh, for the whole trip was a hundred about 130, 140 bucks. Just remember, you can't drink all day unless, of course, you start at breakfast. Yes. So. I don't know. My Cheyenne, <laughs> my new daughter-in-law, had champagne for breakfast one morning. Yeah. I don't know, Ross. We gave it a good try, didn't we? Yeah. 
<laughs> a couple yes, of so. times you did. <laughs> but I mean, and I don't drink. I drink yeah. see, if I drank 15 drinks in one day, I'd be I'd be so hung over the next day I wouldn't have any fun, you know. <laughs> oh, you pace it out. You pace them out. Yeah, that's why I said I, we came out better off just paying whatever we drank because, like I said, between both of us, we both of us together only spent like 140 bucks. But what yeah. they're betting on is the people get the packages. They're not drinking 15. They're buying 15 because they're leaving half bottles and half glasses everywhere. Yes. Which one was mine? I'll oh, I'll go get another one. Yeah. So, well, um, I put it to you this way: uh, when I went with Chris this last time, uh, I ordered a drink, one of them rum drinks, and uh, I turned my head. I tell the bartender, you know, put just a very minimum of of rum in that thing because I don't drink. Okay. So I turn my head and Chris tells him, bump it up, bump it up. <laughs> Good job, uh, Chris. Hey, yeah. No, I don't drink with winklings. Got to get you on the game. <laughs> yeah. Well, like I said, uh, so to see the package would not have been, we would have spent $280, yeah. you know, so the package wouldn't have been good for us. Well, awesome. We didn't buy the package either, only because you think about it, we were on an eight day. You go off the boat three of those eight days. Yeah. Well, you're paying in town anyways. Because you can't yeah. use a card in town, so yeah. um, so it was. It just didn't seem worth it for us. But two hundred and eighty dollars a day. Some people do it without a problem. No, it wasn't yeah. two hundred and eighty dollars a day. It was two hundred and eighty dollars for the package. Oh right. no, that oh, that's that's, yeah, that's worth it. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah there's a lot of people that uh, slip the slip that alcohol in uh, in hot water bottles. Another so one. Uh, you pay two hundred eighty dollars a day. A uh, two hundred eighty dollars for the entire cruise, and you get fifteen drinks a day. Yeah, three. It's three days for the cruise. Three right? days. Yeah. It so that's fifteen and fifteen is thirty. It's forty-five drinks. Ours was an eight day, and I think it was five and something for the drink package. Right. So you, mm -hmm. I mean, if you're going to drink, the drink package is the way to go. No ifs, ands, and buts about it because it's cheaper than right. buying the drinks, you know. Because uh, my wife said one of her friends on the, our, her high school reunion uh, in it said, No, I'm not going to drink that much. He, when he got the beer tap or the bar tap yeah. time, everything was said and done, it was over $800. Right. Oh. <laughs> because you you get drinking and you don't think and you're up there buying more drinks. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you think about it though, you're not, you're not drinking every day on the boat. The first yeah. day, you're not getting on the boat until midday anyways. Yep. If that, most people aren't getting on until two or three. So it's just not worth it, in my opinion. But Yeah. Anyways. Welcome to welcome to Cruising with Russ, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah. that's, how they, that's how they make – that's how they make – and, you know, and one, I, one thing I do like is that you don't have to pay any gratuity while you're there. The gratuity is added on to uh, what your bill, in other words. So I do kind of like that, so you don't have to worry about tipping everybody. Well, and if you then, want the bartender to remember you, you want to slip them something. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, the one we, we were there that night, one that first night, and there was a lot of people. Yeah. And I went up and got myself and my wife a drink, and yeah. I tipped her right off the bat. And she, yeah. when I slid her, I slid her five bucks, and she looked yeah. at me and I said, "She goes, you know." And I said, "Yes, I know. I just want you to have this." And you tipped your I wife, came, huh? You yeah. tipped your wife? Or yeah, the, my wife. So when I, okay. my Cost son was getting course, married, why wouldn't married. I take the mother? <laughs> so anyway, uh, so yes, when I walked back up, she was boom. She was right there giving me a drink, you know, so. But yes, oh, we had, a, we had a great time. So. None of this. And by the way, you know, we have not talked about woodworking. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way it goes. Yeah. Yep. Let's see you stay gone all this time and then we got to catch up. Well, there, there is. If you've mm -hmm. never taken a cruise, we haven't. I want to go on. You, you need bad. to take one, one in your life, in your, you know, you know, make that on your bucket list because yep. it is a lot of fun. Now, I'm gonna. It's gonna take us. I don't. We won't be. We won't take one for another year or so. But uh, Chris was talking about setting up the package for, or setting up a cruise for. 2020 or 2021 early 2021 i'd say early 2021 would be best that way we can get together people can plan on it yes and you can I set agree. these up so you can make payments per month too so let so. this be known in early 2021 <laughs> we're talking about uh from january february march april may june somewhere the first six months of the year we're going to do a woodworking cruise for the let's talk shop with russ show 
So <laughs> uh, anybody that wants to join us, Chris is going to go. I know Russ Meadows is already pretty sure he's going to go. And any of y'all who want to join us in early, uh, you know, the first part, half of the year in 2021, we're going to be setting up a cruise. We're going to, and if y'all, uh, because here's the thing, if you set it up this far ahead of time, you can go in as a group. And you can get a group pricing, which is even cheaper because my son got really, really better prices because there was 35 of us on the cruise. We got like, I mean, all kind of amenities that went with the, um, with the package deal. So it's a little cheaper if you go that way. So just and, and all, all you people who are viewing right now, you're invited too. Yes. All, yes. All the pe panel. And everyone in the chat is also invited. Anybody we'll get the details out as soon as you can put something together. So, so yep. Chris, you're going to be the cruise director for yeah, this? Yeah, I'm going to put Chris in charge of this. <laughs> I'm going to dump it on my wife. <laughs> okay. That's the all-American boy right there. <laughs> uh, my Woodward. mother raised no fools. Bunch of idiots, but no fools. <laughs> uh, Portal Woodwork said my cruise ship was an aircraft carrier. <laughs> yeah, mine was too. <laughs> so apparently he was in the Navy. Yep. Well, we'll, uh, we'll get something put together. I, I'll use the same contacts we used for the cruise that Russ and I went on last year. How many yeah, days? Yeah, now, like I said, uh, Luanna Pierce says we'll start saving for the woodworking cruise. Yes, yeah, start saving right now. You will have so much. There is so much stuff to do uh, on the cruise. So there's never, it's not only uh, the boat has a bunch. I mean, there is a movie theater in the cruise, so you can go watch movies. They have uh, Broadway uh, mm -hmm. stuff like we went and seen that one night. Uh, um, mm -hmm. Made in America or whatever was a musical. We went and watched that one night. They had the, uh, uh, what do you call it, Jim? Were Newlywed uh, game. They had the newlywed game, game. You know, they do those yeah. every 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 cruise. Well, I'm I'm glad you yeah. remembered that because it's been five minutes, so I don't remember anything. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, there five is, minutes ago. there's so much stuff you have. If you want to gamble, you can gamble. Uh, they had oh comedy club. We went and watched the comedy yes. club, and and guess who got called out? Ooh, you? Yeah, he was like he was uh, talking. He was asking a, you know talking to some of the guy people up front. And everybody was had we're in college or um, graduating college or whatever. And he goes, in other words, he was saying, like, yeah, you ain't got a job. Your parents paid for this. You know, your parents are. So <laughs> nobody had jobs, in other words. <laughs> so he finally said, hey, bring up the house lights so I can see who all's in here. So they brought up the house lights. And uh, he was looking around, talked to a couple other people. And then he turned around to the right and looked straight at me. Go, oh, yeah, it's coming. He goes, Santa Claus. <laughs> <Really good. Yeah. laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like, God, glad you're here, Santa. And I said, great. And he goes, uh, so he goes, and uh, he goes, you, oh, Santa. This you in this cruise, you got to bring a Santa hat with you. Yeah, so he goes, uh, <laughs> so Santa, did you <laughs> – do you have a job? Do you have a profession or anything? I said, yes, I was re I said, I, I'm a retired firefighter and everybody in the whole crowd was, yeah. Yes, and I, and so my, uh, my son and his friends were down in the front at the table and they were like, woo, 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 and do, making all kind of extra noise and everything. So he turned around and looked at them and he was like, you know, these, and I said, yeah, my son and his friends are down there at the table. So he talked to my son for a few minutes. What did he tell my son? Oh, oh, I said my son and his uh, wife. And he heard the F and he went, your son and your who? <laughs> and, I, and I said, well, I started to say fiance because, you know, she was his fiance. But now they're married and everything. So he was like, yeah, I don't know if I would want a daughter. <laughs> <laughs> so he was making fun of that or whatever but uh it cory told him he says and so he says uh santa claus son do you have a job and he goes yeah i'm a cop and he goes i ain't gonna tell you what he said <laughs> <laughs> he had a derogatory remark to my son because he was a cop hmm. so but we have a comedy club and they tell you uh there's different ratings each night to have people on the, in the comedy club. And that night was, it was uh, 20 or 18 and older. They told you, you, if you're under 18, don't come in here because in other words, he, 
was very vulgar in some instances. Yeah, the, the early shows are for the younger people where there's really not that much going on vulgar wise. Mm -hmm. But the late show is, is where they really get down with it. Yeah. Yeah, he was yeah, he was quite colorful in his pronunciations. <laughs> Is there many people that get sick on them cruises or? Yes, uh, a couple of people out of our uh, group got sick. Uh, my wife does get seasick and she was seasick somewhat on the last cruise, but she already figured out how to do it. One of her friends had Dramamine patches mm -hmm. and they gave her one on the last cruise and it worked perfect. This cruise, she went to the doctor before we left, uh, actually, and got uh, Dramamine patches, so she was able to put them on, and she didn't have any problems. Yeah, you can walk down there and look behind everybody's ear, and they got a little white bandage, yep. kind of looking thing back there. You know, they're on the patch. Yep. Yeah, she she had a little band aid, and you, it looks like a little like when you a uh, men's shaving patch, a little round mm -hmm. thing that if you cut yourself, and she put it behind your ear, and she wear now hers the first one she got. From her friend, she had to change every 24 hours. These she got this time from her doctor uh, was three days. So wow. that was pretty good. You put one on it lasts for three days. Hey, Chris well, Newland's go. asking about uh, cruise ship karaoke. They do. Do you have any karaoke bars? Yes, they had a karaoke bar there. Oh, God. That's, that's where they you do. get embarrassed. At. <laughs> or you get embarrassed for somebody. That's I'm, Oh, my God. Well, that's a little bit that there's embarrassed for yourself because you actually did it there's embarrassed for your friend and you have to turn your head and then there's embarrassed to the point where you can just take off and leave and leave them up there by themselves and so those are the three levels of karaoke embarrassment but then it's the fourth level where you're not invited back to your own cabin <laughs> yeah <laughs> that probably have there's probably a lot more things that go on that cause that though yeah that's true yeah. Yeah. They had karaoke bars. They had sports bar where you go in there and all there was all, whatever sports was running at that time. They had that on. They had, I mean, they have, like I said, just about anything you can imagine on board to do. You're not, you I don't care what you are, unless you're a nun going to be bored. <laughs> but I can see a nun being bored, but, uh, but anyway, it was, it was a good time. It was a good thing with the family. So, um, uh, you don't know the nuns I know. <laughs> so, I, um, what's this anchor thing you're talking about? What was what? Anchor. Yes, I was going to say that's what I'm thinking of talking about. So, here uh, a few months ago, I purchased the Incra iBox. And what that is, it's a jig for making box joints. I have made my own box joint jig before, and I've used it over the years. But I don't know. I decided I was going to buy this Inker Eye Box and give it a test run and see how it worked. And so I did. And I want to tell you, I am quite impressed with this. Um, it works very, very well. It slides in the miter track. Of your table saw, or you can actually so you can set it up to use on your um, a router table. Also, if your router table has the tracks like on the table saw, can you use it with your CNC? <laughs> no, you can't use it with your CNC. <laughs> yeah, so uh, you use it with a scroll saw. Uh, no, can't <laughs> use it with a scroll saw. Um, one, I, I've got some picture now. I didn't have time to go through and um do a video or anything on this. So they send you a DVD and I, I went to the DVD and snagged some pictures off to show you, which I'll go through that in just a minute and show you some of the setup and how it works. But one of the things I really was impressed was, is how they get it to fit in the different miter saws. And that's this little, these two little gizmos right here. And um, what they are is they're like washers almost. And, um, as you tighten them down, they expand out and put pressure on the side of the miter gate or the miter oh. slot, which oh, okay. tightens up this to keep it from having any slot in the miter slot. Cool. So you got one in the front and one in the back right here that you 
tighten up and uh, that and then this here here I can take this this is you know for your eye protection and your protection here until the next time you fly. but this is actually the key to the whole thing which are these two little bars right here and they are controlled on this end and you even have a micro adjustment mm, so nice. that you can move these uh apart for the uh thing and if you're uh if your joints are too tight if you roll them too tight <laughs> you uh can adjust it here micro adjust it here so you loosen up your joints huh? yes you can loosen up your joints or uh that's that's your adjustment tool right there be an issue it, yeah. i mean literally within uh okay so if you want half inch box the way i had mine set up if you wanted half inch box joints you had to make a jig that had a half inch um thing sticking out to use it for half inch but if you wanted to change the quarter you couldn't change the quarter you had to make another jig yeah so every time you want whatever size you wanted this thing here within a few minutes i can set up and make the uh make the change so it's like nothing if i'm doing half inch slots and decide i want to do three eighths or one quarter within a matter of a seconds i can change this and have it set up for that so naturally you have to change your dado stack on your table saw you know to, to correspond with that but that's up really nice and really easy there's a lot of support um you get this backer here which is basically nothing more than a piece of a uh, uh, mdf um and uh, they give you a template and so you can make some more of these or you can buy them i'm just going to make my own but and it's for the cutout for the back it's just to help support the piece so that it doesn't uh tear there's not a lot of tear out on the back of the box joints so and then this is the stop for this mechanism down here and then naturally you got the safety on the back so that you don't get your hand cut off it's pretty nice it's, it's 149 on amazon yeah. yeah their website is 179 and amazon is 149. Yeah. uh this was a test pattern that i did with it and i want to tell you these joints are they're almost to the point i loosen them up a little bit but you can make them so tight that you have to actually take a mallet to put them together and you basically don't need any glue i mean really yeah, that's the way to do it too that's okay yeah, I, got, I got a pull for the board here or for the panel so how tight when you're doing a box joint thing like that, do you think you really need to get that? Is it? Is there a point where you can get it so tight that you can't get enough glue in there that it'll yeah. hold together? Yes. Or, yeah. yeah. But, and that, what point do you think that is? Uh, it's no different than it's the same kind of thing you would be talking about when you're talking about applying clamps to your projects. You can actually clamp stuff yeah. so tight, mm -hmm. squeeze all that of it, you out. squeeze all the glue out, and then it's like right. so. Yeah. You just have to. Come to a happy um excuse me all you need is to have it be tight enough so when you put it together it doesn't fall apart yeah but you can still take it you got then you've got room for glue and you can put the glue in there yeah see i can get these get any tighter than that i can get this apart but, but that's really too tight yeah it's it's very that's, yeah that's too tight yeah this is actually a little too tight this is the first run i made and i loose i ended up loosening it up but I mean, that's a, that's the, just the first setup I ever made, and that's not together. We, we cut a stand. Yeah, that's the first setup I did, and it came out that great, good. And you and want them a little proud uh, so that you can sand them down flush. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, that was the uh, this was the first test pattern I ran on that thing, and I was very, very, very pleased with how it worked. So let me set up back here. And I'll kind of walk you through a few, a few things. Let me see if I can. Yep. Also, I wanted to, and I didn't bring it in. I have a, I bought a brand new stack, dado set, and it's the best one I've ever owned. Uh, my old dado set was kind of wore out, and when I first did, I take that back. This was the second. The first one I ran, the dado stack was so uh, dull and wore out that. 
it just, I couldn't even do it. So I ordered a new one and got the new one in. And this was the second test pattern I did with a new data stack. So, and it really, really worked out very well. Let's see if I can. Hey, Russ, while you're looking there, Aussie asked if you do that on your uh, table saw or your router table. You can do either or. If okay. your table saw or if your router table has miter slots like your table saw, you, this will work on the router table also. Either or. Uh, share. Let's see. Can y'all see my screen? Yes. Yep. yep. Uh, naturally, you have to set up, uh, decide what size box joints. Uh, that looks you, safe. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's got it unplugged. He's got it unplugged. Come he's on. He's got the plug oh, sitting okay. there. Yeah, plug. The, the right. cord is yeah. on top. I didn't see that. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I bet he's wearing sandals, too. I he's wearing sandals. <laughs> looks like he's making a cabinet door frame there. It was the pass. <laughs> Those fingers look a little short. <laughs> I mean, no. <laughs> okay, I don't. I hope I don't have to go through this every time. Oh, there it is over there. All right. That in anyway, you got to set up a set set of stack dados and decide whatever size you want: quarter, half inch, three eighths inch, three quarter, whatever size size you want. Now this is uh, setting up the miter slot part, portion of it, and so you this comes separate. You have to attach the jig to it. So therefore you can put it in your miter slot and then you tighten these up with an Allen screw and they will actually spread out to, to make the, um, so there's no slop in the, and movement in this, this set, um, the piece of metal that runs up and down the miter slot. So, and you want it to move freely, but yet you don't want any side play. So, and then you add the base to it, which is for the um, actual jig. And you might want to make sure it's square to that piece of metal on the miter slot. And then you just screw the jig down. Once you get that all done, then you screw the jig down on top of the miter slot. It was very, very great, great uh, directions. Lots of pictures, which I love pictures when I'm putting something together because half the time I can see the picture and I know what to do rather than reading all that bull crap they give me. <laughs> yeah. Rest yeah. So, right. But lots of pictures. And it was probably one of the better set of directions that I've, I've seen mm -hmm. on tools. And they also send you a DVD uh, with the tool that actually explains how to put it together. And that's where these pictures came from is I captured them off of the DVD. Um, now you see it's being put to the miter slot. Um, to adjust it the first time, uh, before you actually attach it, you set it up and then bring it up to where that sits on the side of the uh, stack dado. And then you add the wings and everything to it. The wings are support to support the piece when you're cutting it on the... Uh, or doing the box joints. And then you add the back piece and the front piece. Uh, that's all in the red, two red pieces that are there. And I'll show it again is all nothing but just MDF. So they, it, if you make a mistake, it, uh, it doesn't damage the jig. It'll, you'll run it through the MDF and then you can either buy new ones or replace them. Built, make some new ones and replace them. They're, they're not hard to, uh, replace, but that's how you set it up. You bring it up right up next. And then you, uh, it needs to be about an eighth of an inch away from the stack dado set. Now, if you're change every time you change, if you're doing half inch, you set this up once and that's it. The next time you come back, if you use the same dado stack and you're using half inch, you don't have to change it. If you go to quarter inch, you got to change the dado stack and you have to reset this because that will change. And then that's the adjustment knob on the end for changing and moving that thing left or right to uh, this little knob up here on top, this little black knob is how that locks this mechanism down. So it won't move once you get it set. 
Then you add the wings over to it and then put it all together and then make your first cuts. Uh, it recommends that you do a test cut, which I did on that one once I got the new stack data set and um, did my first piece and tried it and made sure it was all right. And at that point, I realized they were a little too tight. I needed to loosen them up, and I did. And that's showing how you can set that once you make your first test cut. So you you'll bring those out to the width of you set it originally up to a one eighth of an inch away from the saw blade, and then you uh, use that knob to set it to the width of your test cut. And then you go for it. And all you do is just, I don't even use, they show a clamp being used. I don't use the clamp. I, I just hold it with my hands and it's been fine. See how they're showing a clamp on that piece? Now, yeah. This is actually cutting the actual second set. In other words, you all right, let's say you have a left, right, and a front back. So once you cut the front and the back, you have to use those to set up for the left and the right sides. And that's what this is. You would set like the front is the walnut colored wood that's there. You set it up on the jig and then bring that other piece up next to it and lock it down and cut it. And that sets up for the fingers for the other piece. See how he's bringing it up? Get them together, and then you'll actually remove, at one point, you'll remove the walnut piece. This is a little video I captured. Just over to cut the opposite end. Be sure to orient the mark to reference edge so that it is facing the pit. I mean, just that quick. So, like I said, I don't even use the uh, clamp. I hold it with my hand, and it's not a problem at all. So, I'll, I'll walk you back through. This little knob up here uh, locks this mechanism down so that these cannot move once you get into position. And then these actually have screws on them so that you adjust them. Oops, these plates up front have screws in them so that you adjust them to your whatever width you want to use. So Russ, why did, <clears throat> sorry, why is that adjustment knob on the end? This? You have two. Because uh, one, uh, this is your main it? adjustment. Okay. And then this is your micro adjustment. I mean, really, really fine moves. So in other words, if I set it and I say, okay, this is great. Um, in other words, this would make uh, large changes, move real a lot. Okay. Of course, and fine adjustment. There you go. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Leave it to Katie to come up with it. Course. With course. Yeah. Yep. She just wanted to throw the word course out there too. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's what it's for. So that So that you would just move this actually just like a quarter of a turn. And then that would move that to loosen up the joint a little bit. When I make box joints, I've got that shape Oko, so I'll hang it off the edge of the workbench or the, the actually the tabletop that it's on the workbench. Yes. But And then I can put the wood down and just say, okay, cut a quarter inch, groove, cut, move over a quarter of an inch, cut another one, groove it over, you know. But it'll the actual CNC will go over the end of that thing two inches because yeah. it's got a sixteen by fourteen cutting area. Yep. And I just but they're so tight, you know. This just well, that, they're hard to get together. And, and that's then, what I love about this is and yeah. that was some of the problems I was having, mm -hmm. and I decided just well that and if you want once again if you want quarter inch or you want half inch or you yeah, want whatever the bit with you like, have to yeah. make every jig. A different jig for every one. This thing does it all, and mm -hmm. and it really, I didn't. I, the price didn't scare me. I mean, what y'all say it was one hundred forty nine dollars on Amazon. Yeah, for what you're getting, that's a deal. Trust me. I've had this thing now. It's 
this is what I made. The you all remember seeing the rose box that I had? Mm -hmm. That's what I made the rose box with. And hang on. And that's what I made the uh, pirate box with. Yeah. Well, Anchor doesn't make cheap tools. No. Uh, you know, they they're appear to be done right. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I am very, very pleased with the way that this turned out. With this type of joint, uh, this, you know, the tightness of the joints. Very, very pleased. Dude, this is the one I did the top uh, on the CNC, yeah. this part up here, and added it to it. So, yeah, I did the rose box. I did that. Actually, the stack dado set that I bought um, came in a cardboard type box, and uh, I didn't like that as far as, um, let me see if I can figure out a place to put this. Did you send so it to I, me? I, I didn't like it because it was flimsy, so I used the ink, uh, the Incra to make the box for the stack data set. Also, so yeah, I, I, I'm I'm gonna make some more, and I really, like I said, I'm really, really impressed. Uh, it wasn't hard to set up. Good instructions, a video. The video not only takes you through setting it up, but the video walks you through how to make box joints. The video walks you through how to make. You can make your own with this jig. It's over here. With this jig, you can actually make your own um, wooden hinges with this jig. So, pretty cool. Pretty cool. So, if you're interested in making box joints or you've made your box joints in the past like me, and then, then here's the thing. You'll go for a period of time. You won't use that jig and you'll lay that jig down and the next thing you know because it's a piece of wood that's usually strapped to the front of your uh, miter gauge for your table saw you'll end up throwing it away or by the time you find it it'll uh it'll be so old that the wood will be warped and it won't be any good anymore so this stops all that that's one thing that i was uh, looking forward because the last jig I made, I hadn't used it in so long. When I brought it out, I looked at it. I'm like, yeah, I'll have to make another one. Yeah. I think the termites had got into it. <laughs> I hadn't used it in so long. But then once again, it was a pain in the butt because just I had to make a jig for every size. I can, within a few minutes, I mean, now naturally you got to set the dado set up in your saw to match the size of what you want to make. But as far as setting this jig up, you can change it just to, you know, that quick. Well, with the other jig, would you have to set up your dado set anyway? Huh? With with the the wooden jig, wouldn't you have to? Set yeah, you. Either way, you got to cha change it if you want to change the size. Yes. There were a couple of neat. Well, there's been more than a couple, but some kind of neat uh, box joint jigs out on the internet. I know. Uh, Matthias Wendell made one. John Heiss made one that would like auto advance the wood for yes. you. And you didn't have to really screw around with it. But it's that to me, it's it keeps coming down to that tightness of the joint. You know yeah. how you know how can you adjust it to get the looseness in there so you can get glue in it too. Aussie Man uh, has posted back before, and I thought uh, I'm sorry I didn't bring this up before, but Aussie Man has one of these. And he just said the fine adjustment is good for tightening or loosening the joint. Yes. He said he loves his. So Aussie man has one. Well, if Aussie loves his, then we should all buy yeah, one. We all, yeah, we all should go out and buy one tomorrow. <laughs> I think he's the, Aussie's the gold standard of box joint jigs for us. Yeah. I'm going to buy one for each blade. Yeah. <laughs> I got one that there I made you that, that uses a threaded shaft to increase the blade as it goes through the cut. And it works okay, but it's too slow. So you don't have to have a dado set. You can do it without it, but boy, is it slow. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you're talking about using your just regular saw blade. So you'll make a cut and yeah. move it, make a cut and move it. Yeah. And my jig has got a knob that every time you turn the threaded shaft, you know how many inches, how many threads per inch there are. So you know the distance and it's moving every time you turn it. So you can you can do it, but it's not worth the other. Yeah. That's a much better system. Yeah. yeah. Let me real quick, because I do want to talk about, and I didn't bring it in, so uh, talk amongst yourself, 
just keep everybody entertained while I'm gone real quick. And uh, I want to go out there and get the, uh, I'm not going to bring them in, but I'll get the box that it's in so I can show you the brand. And I found these, I typed in to Google um, best box or best uh, dado stack and read through a bunch of reviews of the different dado stacks. And this is the one I chose. Uh, Freud? You know what? The Freud? No. No? Nope. Let me go get it and I'll show you. So okay. talk amongst yourselves. I'll be right back. Talk, 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 talk. Anybody so what, right? All right, he's gone. What do you guys have for dado stacks? I've got a DeWalt set. It's, I've got know, a Freud. Gonna, I got a Freud. What do you like about it? It was only a hundred bucks, and it's real. Okay. <laughs> okay. I I don't even know the name on mine. I got it at one of the woodworking shows for like twenty bucks. Wow, yeah, I really? Got, I got mine at Home Depot, and it was a hundred bucks, and it's an eight-inch dado stack. Yeah. And, uh, it works great for everything I do. Yeah, I, I think I've got crispy because mine was a Christmas present. So I didn't have to spend any money for it, but it's a DeWalt yeah. set, but it's it's nice. It's got the chipper blades in it and yeah, yeah. Uh, nice. Yeah. Okay. So Russ is back. Yeah. We're off. Mine, okay. 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 Talk about somebody else now. Mine was cheaper. It's a, it's a 3 16th, but it's just a bent blade. Uh, <laughs> I decided to go it's, ahead and bring it in. Yeah. See, this is the box that I made to keep the dado stack in. Did you make it big yeah. enough? Sweet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, really? That's huge. So, Russ, what if you didn't have the dado stack blade in the first place? Would you have been able to make the box to store the dado set blade in? Uh, no. Therefore, you would not have purchased it in the first place. Well, this, this is one of these questions. Like, see, because yeah, it, came in, like, question. it came in this box, and the box was just, I'll just that's going to get destroyed, you know? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So, that's the chicken and anyway, egg this thing. Is the brand chicken and egg thing. You know, okay. I can't see it. Lock yourself. Can you hear me? Any sound. I don't have any sound. Well, now you do. Yeah, yeah no, you do. You're good now. Yeah. I didn't this, do it. This is the uh, stack that I chose. Uh, it had the highest rate of views, uh, reviews. People liked it the most. It's, sh I mean, it is razor sharp. And one of the reasons they liked it the most uh, was uh, the amount of teeth. Uh, that were on. If you'll take the fruit and the, some of those others and look, there. I've got a set of the fruit. That was what was dull, and um, the chipper blades in the middle for extending it only have two well, teeth. On only have two teeth, right? Yeah. Well, let me show you this one. Wow, that's a thick one, five eighths. Yeah, it sure but is. Yeah, but yeah. On, yeah. on the point, even though it's only got two, you offset them so that. Yes, I agree yeah. that you offset them. <laughs> But this I don't, think, I don't think my saw is that that wide for something like this that. This is the chipper <laughs> blade, and look how many is on there. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's well, nice. Explain dado because there there are some in in the uh, chat that don't know what a dado is. Okay, it's, it's wide. Is to use your table saw to make wide slots in wood. Okay, so you set up the blades to different thicknesses. The smallest blade on this would be one eighth of an inch thick. And then you add different stack sets into those, and I'll show that. A, a dado is a groove across. The yeah, it yeah. it makes grooves, but this as is, opposed to using a router. Yes, right. This is the amount oh, hand saw. that the outside has. Look at all those teeth. Oh, chihuahua! Yeah, that's one of the reasons this was rated the highest was the uh, the sharpness, the amount of teeth. Uh, on not only the inside and outside uh, ones, but the all the chippers in the uh, center had a large well, amount of well, teeth. Where did you get that at, Russ? Uh, Ron on Amazon? Yeah, I found it on Amazon. Yep. That one. That one seems like it's worth yeah, going out yeah, and nice sharp. And guess it. what? It was the same. It was the same hundred bucks that all your fruit and everything were. Oh no, kidding! Oh, yep. Wow. yep. Same one price. Thing I wish my Freud had is I wish the. The gems were magnetic. Yeah. yeah, that would be nice. But here's uh, so what you want to do, you're asking, how does it work? You would take, for instance, this is an eighth of an inch. So I could add the chipper to the inside of it. What is the that's, chipper? That's an eighth of an inch. So now I've got a, a quarter of an inch. 
Now you just have a bunch of these blades that you just keep on adding to the set to make it thicker. But on that one, don't you have to sandwich another carbide blade on the opposite That's side? The other side? Okay. Yeah, right. Yeah, on all right of them you do. Yeah, I, I just this thing looked kind of cool, so I thought maybe. Yeah, here's the other. To it. Here's the other blade that okay. you would sandwich on the back side, and so these I have them laid up top, so all four of these make one half an inch. And then you can put a shim in there to make it just. If you one. want it, then it comes with shims. Yeah. That you can actually um, w make it a little bit wide. I think these are. Um, 32nd and 16th of an inch. Yeah, yeah that'd yeah. be a, your glue joint. Yep. There you go. Yeah. Yep. So my glue joint. Uh, I saved these out answer. of the box to separate them. And what I'm going to do in the center of the boxes, I didn't have enough time before I left for the uh, cruise, is I'm going to uh, drill a hole in the bottom of the box and put a 5 8 inch wooden dowel to hold these things in position so they don't move. And then I'll use these to separate them to keep them from rubbing on, on each other but yeah so it comes with it goes from uh i think it's all the way to three quarters of an inch uh dados from one quarter all the way up to 29 30 seconds wow so that was a hundred bucks it was only a hundred bucks nice. and i paid that for the the freud food Frugal me, whatever you want to call Freud. it. It's called Freud. 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 Okay, the Freud. Sigmund Freud. Freud. I'll remember that. So uh, do you take? So do you take your plate off your saw then to fit them on there? Yes. You have yeah, to put. Okay. A, you have to put a a uh, another plate on it. You usually make one. Yeah, uh, you can make a plate or buy what. Uh, my saw came with the dado uh, plate, and it's usually about one inch wide. And I just made one out of plywood and yep, make it and out of plywood. Laid up through it. And I would, I mean, if you're going to do it, and I was impressed with this. Uh, like I said, as soon as I put it on and cut the first box joint, box joint, which was actually the second wow. box joint that I cut with that jig, but this was cut with this stacked set, and I was totally, totally impressed. Hey, Russ, hold that up real close to the camera. I want to see the bottom of the of the box joint. How flat is the bottom of the joint? Tip, pivot mean? it towards me. Do what now? Pivot, pivot it 90 degrees forward. Yeah. So, so it's not curved. It's flat. Is, is that what you want to see how flat it is? That's what's key yeah. to a dado set. How flat the cut is. Right. Yeah. Yeah. On the end of the oh, team, I know what but, you're saying. You yeah. want to see it like this. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's, pretty flat. Flat. that's very yes. flat. Yep. Yes. That's pretty flat. I see what you're wanting. You're wanting to see that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, you know, even if you had to nick that out with a chisel a little bit, that's not you curved. Don't have, it's no, not well, curved, every though, box you know. That I have built, I didn't. And now this is, you have to realize this is cheap pine. This is not expensive wood. If you no, buy a cheap nice set, set, those bottoms will be curved. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. yeah. yeah, these aren't curved, trust me. Yeah, well, they should be totally too. flat because you're going across the arc back. Yes, but a cheap set will actually not make them flat. Yeah, because oh, okay. set, a lot right? of times, a cheap set too, uh, the chippers or the knickers on the outside will yeah. leave a little, a little line. Down on yep. The side. Yep. You yep. prefer yep. that? You prefer yep. that rather than a router? Then I table like table. I like using the uh, table saw because it's so fast. Well, there's another advantage too. The table saw with a good blade will prevent tear out on the back side. Right. Yes. The router right. Table is more likely to give you a tear out. Actually, I just looked at Amazon right now. It's ninety bucks. Wow. Really? Wow. At Amazon Prime, yeah. So, um, yeah. So, if you don't have a stack data set, I would highly recommend this. And like I said, I typed it in and I went and started reading all the reviews that people were making i spent like 30 minutes or so reading all the reviews and hands down everybody was saying like this is the best this is the best and i'm like all right there's enough people said it that i'm like i'll try it it's and like uh, like i said it was a hundred dollars so <coughs> that's not a lot of money no because a fourth no. 
just top of the line is 200. Yeah. So I uh, ordered this uh, from Amazon, got it delivered. And actually, Amazon is trying everything they can do to get your money because now they've gone to most things can be delivered next day. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Very easy. I ordered this. I ordered this. I think I got the jig set up and used it on a money a Monday. Figured out my set wasn't worth a flip. Ordered the new this new set on a Monday afternoon, and by God, by Tuesday afternoon, I had the set. So I've, ordered, I, I've ordered parts after midnight and had them on my porch at eight o'clock the next day. I'll yeah. tell you, I just went through a, a tour of one of the Amazon facilities around here and I can see why they do it. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And if, um, just to let everybody know, Brenda G, yeah, Brenda's not on tonight. Uh, she's out there in the chat. Bless her heart. She had a root canal done this past week and it has gone awry. She's in, her face is all swollen. She's in a lot yeah. of pain and she didn't want to look like a chipmunk tonight. So mm -hmm. that's the only reason she's not on the show. And she said she would, was going to have to bow out tonight for the show. So I hope and pray that you get better, Brenda. I mean, there are two, two, thing, two pains on this planet. If you ask me, they're probably the worst is that is an earache and a toothache. Yeah. She was sitting there asking you a question uh, about whether Paul wears his knickers on the outside or something. Uh, I think yeah, I said it wasn't this Paul. Yeah. <laughs> so uh but yeah i just thought i would bring um bring this uh talk about that because i i mean i've used it long enough now and i've made enough boxes with it that i'm really and use this this also that i'm really impressed with both both of these and um like i said i wanted a, a nice box for this set because my other set kind of uh they not only got kind of dull but they also got kind of rusty so I'm like, I ain't going to let this set, this happen to this set. This is a nice set. So I made this box for it. Uh, I even threw these little, little packets in there that are supposed to help prevent rust. Hey, Russ, have yeah. you ever used any of the old wobble set dados? Yes. I know. Yeah, you, there. yeah, you got that right. <laughs> yeah. I have. That's all I ever use. And honestly, I don't like using them either. Yeah. No. It scares the bejesus out of me. That will oh, give man. you a rounded bottom of the cut, though. The yeah. Bottle yeah. Well. yeah, they will. Whereas the regular stack dados, uh, it, it depends on the, the, the bevel of the outside blades. Most That's of them another are thing I was reading grind, about. and those are flat. The ones you got are flat, flat grind. That's yeah. the reason. I, one of the things I was reading about this set is it said that the teeth were ground flat to make the bottom flat. So. All right. That, now, that Freud, wobble... Freud, Roy that does wobble. have a, a, a box joint set that you can get that's uh, flat top. Yeah. That wobble set is what you do is you hold on to the wood and you just let the saw vibrate across the wood <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh But between the two, the Incra and the um, this data set, uh, I, I'm very pleased. I've used it enough now. I've made like six boxes. Um, six different boxes and uh, they've all turned out really, really nice. So, and like yes. I, I, this uh, box here is made with construction grade. Matter of fact, when I put it together, I had to clamp. This is all construction grade fur, you know, one before. <laughs> when I put it together, it actually, as soon as I cut it, it started warping. So I had to get it over to there and get the dados cut and get it put together and get it clamped so the damn thing wouldn't warp so i could get it halfway you know so uh and, and it and it turned out nice i mean just for a set of those i'm gonna put a nice hand i've got a little locking thing on it but i'm gonna put some nice handles on it like i said drill a hole through the middle put a, a wooden dowel in there to keep them from shifting around it's funny all the work you're going through the store yards and mine just sit on a screw on the wall. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, you know, the last set I was used and abused. Like I yeah. said, they're rusty. Uh, I've had them for a long time. I think they're dull, and uh, and they were the Freud uh, ones also. But uh, I bought them to do a set. I was building a set of shells in a doctor's office, and. Uh, needed to i wanted to cut the grooves in the sides for the shells to go in rather than having to put pins in it 
and uh, that's what we ended up using, and that's what I bought that set for, and that's what I used it for. So it actually cut through three quarter inch grooves in the side pieces for the, that set of shelves that I made for that doctor's office. So, and I've used it, you know, over the years several times. But that Russ, one when, I, was the, when was the last time you used a hardwood for a project? I always see you using pine for everything. <laughs> <laughs> Not that often. I ha I have lots of hardwood, but I, I like to wood. test stuff like on my scroll yeah. saw projects. If I mean, if I yeah. get a pattern from Steve, I know he's probably already tested it, so halfway it should halfway work. <laughs> I thought he was going to put it work first. <laughs> so uh, if mm -hmm. I make a pattern, I usually cut it in cheap wood just to make sure the damn thing's going to work before I do it. So, oh, so it's a lack of confidence in your work, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's God. it. I'm not that he makes so many damn patterns, you know, that he's pretty well confident in what he makes. I, I ain't got that confident yet. So obviously I have, yesterday's I have, pattern. <laughs> I have oak, cherry, uh, mahogany, walnut, babinga, purple heart, uh, there? maple, uh, soft maple, hard maple, curly maple. Uh, bloodwood, or I have all those in my shop. Well, let's see you use some, bud. I will. <laughs> a nice clock. A nice <laughs> yeah, you could make a really nice clock out of that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then give I, that, it away. Yeah, but those are pro when I use that stuff. That's to sell. I mean, somebody <laughs> ordered something and I make it out of that. I oh. think that's what John was hoping for was some good wood. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, he, he, he was hoping for that. He can wish in one hand and crap in the other one. See which one pulls up. I am very happy with the gift I received. <laughs> I, I said you were only worth pine. Yeah. Yeah. There you My, go. Hey, I made mine's only made out of pine. What you talking about? <laughs> I didn't Nothing wrong with pine. I didn't make it out of expensive wood. Pine built this country. Pine yep. is fine. Pine is fine. Yeah. Pine is fine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've, I'm looking over there right now, and I and and you know, I have all those. Now I don't have. I think the longest piece that I have in the shop because I don't build large things is probably four foot. I don't have a lot of. I don't get eight foot stuff for out of walnut or whatever. I'll get like a four foot piece. Um, the lumber place that I go to buy all my like good wood. Uh, they will cut any dimension that you want as long as you leave them enough on the board for them to resell. And that is, in other words, if I go in there and I tell them I want two foot off of a 10 foot board, they'll actually sell me two foot because the, uh, the rest of the eight foot is long enough they can sell. Yeah. I got that same over here. The same thing. Yeah. So they're really nice about that because uh, a lot of people do it for small projects. They're really nice about that. Now, usually I don't buy just two foot. Usually I'll buy f my minimum size. I usually buy from them is four foot. So the yeah, minimum I usually buy is like 50 to 75 board feet. Yeah. I won't, yeah. you know, I don't do with Home Depot or Lowe's or yeah. I go to the Amish mill. What do you pay for walnut there? About three and a quarter. Jeez, it's normally close to $8. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say I pay it right at seven something. A board foot for walnut here. Actually, actually, I got about a hundred board feet of walnut for next to nothing. Uh, I answered a Craigslist ad. Guy advertised oak and maple and cherry, and I said I went there and I made him an offer for the whole pile, and I got almost three hundred board feet of lumber for I think it was two hundred and ten bucks or something like that. Oh and my And eighty percent of it was walnut. Wow. 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 So you have I a will. whole panel of brand new friends. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, will tell, I will tell you something that's interesting about the I'm trip. closer, John. I could be there in three hours. <laughs> <laughs> Come on down, my friend. Come on down. Yeah. Where are you at? In New York, right? Yeah. yeah John, right are you still making clocks now? Is that it? Yeah. That, that <laughs> takes me about probably about 16 hours to get to you. About, yeah. 16, 17 hours. Yeah. Um, one interesting thing about the trip that I did notice is we, you do tons, and I mean tons of walking. 
I'll walk. My wife, the first day on the trip, she has one of these Fitbits that keeps track of her, how many steps she takes. She, uh, her first day on the trip, she got over 10,000 steps. Wow. Jeez. Yeah. yeah so you, a lot do of a, the, you do a lot of walking. Well, you know, I have my hips and my back have been bothering me a lot. Did you know after about the second day of so much walking, my back actually and my hips started to quit, didn't hurt anymore? Oh, yeah. I, I can believe that. Yep. Actually, yeah, I was going to say. And so I told my wife after on Wednesday, we woke up Wednesday morning. And I got out of bed and she looked at me. And she goes, how's your back? And I said, it's great. Why? And she goes, I noticed because usually when I get out of bed, I have to sit up on the side of the bed for a few minutes. And, go, <laughs> and I moan and groan before I stand up. And grumble. And she, yeah, and she was like, yeah, I saw you just got right out of bed. And I said, so that tells me that walking was really good. For, all that walking was really good for me. So I got to get my butt back on the treadmill. Uh, exercise. Go figure. Yep. <laughs> yeah, we're yep. Exercise. I mean, that's, you're yeah. right. And, I, and you know, I kind of know that. But when you're hurting at one point, you, that's the last thing you want to do is exercise. Got to push through. I, but by going on this trip, you know, I wanted to be there with my son and I wanted to do a lot of things and I didn't want to hold anybody back by going on this trip. I kind of forced myself, even though it kind of hurt the first day or so, I forced myself to do it. And which was actually a good thing because like today I woke up this morning, my back does not hurt at all. And that's the first, this is the first time in almost <clears throat> three months I haven't had a back, my back hurt. So yeah, I told my wife, I said, the treadmill's coming out. I'm gonna have to get nice speaking of that, uh, as soon as we get off this hangout, I've got to take my wife. Our little town keeps the uh, the lights on at the at the, the track over there at the high school all night long. So we have to go. We've been starting to walk the track. Well, I, I walk a little bit. She walks more than me. Yeah. I'm perfectly fine with that. Well, it, but we have to go do that as soon as I leave here. Yep. You uh, start off a little. You know, <laughs> I push myself into this, uh, the, the walking on the trip. Uh, like I said, but uh, yeah, don't hurt yourself, but definitely uh, uh, when I talked to my doctor um, a while back when we were, they sent me to the therapy and then we've, I've been doing those exercises also. And he said, you know, walking is, uh, you're not going to start the arthritis, uh, but moving and walking is very, very good for you. And it'll, it'll help postpone how, you know, how fast it, how fast it progresses. In other words, if you just sit on your ass and don't do anything, it's going to progress fast. Yep. yep. They got my wife in physical therapy for her back problems and they have a treadmill that's underwater. And that thing is really oh, cool be. because you get the effect of walking, but you don't put any pressure on your joints. Yes. Right. Yep. So but, yeah, what I'm, people tend to forget is when you don't exercise, for lack of better words, or be active, the muscles atrophied, which makes it even tougher to get going. Yes. Yeah. Hey, Russ, Brenda wanted to know if they have mobility scooters for decrepit people like her yes. that stagger around like a drunken sailor. Yes, they do. Please. They had mobility okay. Scoot okay. scooters there. So, the Brenda, ship. put your deposit down for the cruise now. There you go. There you go. We have a way for you yeah. to get they around. Had, uh, they had uh, what wheelchairs. There you go. Yeah. They had wheelchairs. They had mobility school. Yes. They elevators. Did. They have elevators. They have elevators. Yep. They're they're totally set up. Even they have uh, handicap bathrooms. So, well, you got to reserve those rooms. You, they're not all that way. <laughs> no. You got to reserve no, the handicap. This one that bathroom. we were on did have them. No, they do, but all the rooms don't have them though. Oh yeah, I I know. I'm talking about out in the open. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, you're right. If you wanted a handicapped bathroom in your room, you would have to reserve that. Yes. Right. Oh. Yep. Yeah, Luanna Pierce said, use it or lose it. I agree. I mean, I'm yep. a firm believer. When I went on this trip, uh, Monday more, uh, Sunday and Monday, I was in quite a bit of pain. And by Wednesday, it was a total, totally different situation. And like I said, and today even, here it is Saturday. Uh, we got back Friday afternoon. Uh, here it is Saturday afternoon, and I really feel good. Now, do you think it was from walking around, or was it from buying the drink package? Because <laughs> <laughs> there's a, it's a big difference. <laughs> no, it, was, it was from it was from all the walking. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, it's encouraging. 
<laughs> it was from all the walking. My wife, like I said, she's got a Fitbit, and the first day was 10,000 steps. Oh, I, I believe it. it. She was yeah. like, holy crap, I walked 10,000 steps today. Oh, the second day we were there, she got a bed. She was moaning and groaning. Her calves were killing her from doing so much walking. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, she, was sure. like, she was like on her tippy toes going to the bathroom. My <laughs> brother, like laughing. This is kind of a funny story, but my brother worked for Cummins Allison. He was an engineering guy. And uh, they used to, for their insurance, they had pedometers. So all of the guys in the offices would like take their pedometers and throw them in a box and they'd take them out to the shop where the factory guys were at on the floor. And those guys would get <laughs> <laughs> Those guys would clip like five or six of them onto yeah. their belts and walk around all day, and they'd give them back to them at the end of the day because they had to report that back to the to the company as you know, yeah, I'm real active. See how many you know steps I yeah. walk a day. <laughs> Jeez, uh, Jimbo said he has to go. He's going to talk to his granddaughter, and they only gave her about two months now. Uh, oh, for those man. of you who don't know, James Parker, his uh, um. Granddaughter has cancer, and uh, nice. she's not doing good. So, for those of you who do say a little prayer or pray, I would ask you to pray for her because uh, I cannot imagine what uh, him and his family is going through. I yeah. just cannot imagine it. So, that sucks. Yeah. Yes, it does. But uh. So uh, I guess that's about all, not unless anybody on the panel has anything. I to... Sure. I just want to pay respects to all the family out there who have lost loved ones in service to our country with Memorial Day coming up. It's a great time to say thank you. And God bless. Indeed. Thanks, Steve. Yep. Beat me to go ahead. <laughs> yes, yep. yes. Uh, thank you for bringing that up, Steve. That's... Yes. yes. Yes, it's Memorial Day weekend. Memorial Day is actually Monday. But uh, uh, it's the time that we're, we should be thinking about all the people and all branches of service over the years that have lost their lives protecting this country and giving us, giving me the ability to be able to sit here right here tonight and talk to all of y'all. Amen. And giving all of y'all the ability to do the things that you do every day, go to work, uh, go to a McDonald's, uh, yeah. go get ice cream, go on a cruise. Um, it's those men and women that have served our country over the years and died serving our country. Uh, it's a day to say, to acknowledge and say thank you. So, For us, I talked to a mother today or e through email. She's lost three of her sons in service. Holy wow. Christ. Wow. Imagine how. Indeed. Uh, you know, I was trying to reply to her email and I couldn't even make the words come out of my head. How, yeah. What do you say? Yeah. Yeah, I, I I know. My son was a Marine for four years, and uh, he was over in Afghanistan and uh, Africa and a few other places over in that part of the world for a while. Um, he was gone for like eight months, and uh, there wasn't a day that went by that I wasn't, you know, scared, yeah, worried constantly. He was on my mind. So, and I'm and he's home now, and I'm happy. I'm. You know, and I, you know, I couldn't imagine losing a child or losing a family member. Uh, you know, I, I, it's or hard. a friend. Yeah, or a friend, a good friend. I, I've been lucky. I've been working for the military for thirty years now, the Navy and the Coast Guard. Many guys I know and girls have been deployed. Damn lucky! I got them all back. Yep. One of my sons. Um, I'm not, I, I'm going to say friend, uh, because I think he knew him before, but anyway, one of my son's friends that was in the Marine Corps with him and went through boot camp and everything actually got sent over to a place over there, uh, in Iraq or Afghanistan, one of those places. And, uh, my son didn't actually go to that spot where he was at anyway, to make a long story short, he hit an, uh, IED, improvised IED. explosive device, yeah. IED. Yeah, he hit an IED, and uh, he's really messed up. It uh, shattered three vertebrae in his back. Mm. So he's, yeah, he's got a steel plate in his head. It shattered three vertebrae, several other things. Wow. I had a cousin, Russ, who was in uh, Vietnam War. I, I don't remember him very well. I was pretty small. 
but he died the first day. He landed in Da Nang, and within four hours, he was dead. Wow. 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 Ken McCroy said uh, his daughter has been gone for two years now. So, Ken, I guess you lost your daughter to cancer. So, sorry to hear that, my friend. Yes, it's cancer. Is, that's another thing. Uh, cancer is just a cruel, cruel, cruel disease. So it takes a lot, a lot of people out. I'm looking back through, but thank you, Aussie man, uh, for being out there. Ken McCrory. Yeah, he said yes. So he lost his daughter two years ago to cancer. Terrible. My uh, heart goes out to you, my friend. Uh, Jimbo said, thanks, Russ, for doing this. I uh, appreciate you for watching, Jim. Uh, JP Woodworking's out there. Luanna Pierce. Brenda G. Designs has been out there in the chat. I hope you get the feeling better. Maybe we'll be back on next week. <coughs> uh, just going back through just to see who's all been out there. Did everybody get their thumbs up in? Yep. Ken, uh, well, uh, we got right now we got 28 watching. I've got 22 thumbs up. So that's pretty good. I got 27 thumbs up. I got, I got 28. 28. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Maybe mine's running a little bit behind over here. I got 28. Imagine that. Uh, Dan Inge from Dan Inge <laughs> Woodworking is out there. Uh, thank you, Dan, for watching. <laughs> Dick, uh, Dixon Hoffman. Yeah. I think he's on the panel, ain't he? <laughs> Joe, uh, Joe uh, Zagula. Uh, the Oshlin is a great data set. Light Rust is a good price and a superior for a superior data set. Yes, but apparently he has one. So Dennis Goodson is out there in the chat. Thank you, Dennis, for being out there. So just that's just a few of the people that went out there in the chat tonight. So. We will be back next week, and um, good Lord willing, the creek don't rise, and I should have a show this Wednesday night uh, for the scrolling and making with Russ. So uh, anybody got anything, last words they want to say here on the panel? Yes. Night. With Paul and Al in your ear. Yeah, and with Paul and Al in my ear on Wednesday nights, yes. <laughs> They're usually on, in my ear. And they get to chat and talking back and forth. <laughs> Between each other while I'm trying to scroll. <laughs> that's why I keep. That's why I keep muting myself because I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to confuse you while you're talking. I think I'm going to set up another another hangout, and we're going to be in the hangout listening to you talk. And anyway, hey, that's a there good idea. Go. A start right. hangout to the hangout. Yeah. Thank you all for being out in the chat. I appreciate it very much, and thank you all for being in the panel, Chris, Dixon, Jim, John. Katie, Al, Paul, Russ, and Steve Good. Thank you for all being in the chat. There's only one thing we have left to do before we get off here, and that is just give me sawdust, lots of sawdust all around me and everywhere. I like it flying all around my shop and even in my beard and hair. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Everybody. Everybody. Bye. All right, everybody. Bye. Bye. Break out your drinks. Can't don't have to go home, but you can stay here. It's done. Move along. Move along. <laughs> move Good along. Night. No, you.